Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about today's uh, UEFA Champions League slate. Um, again, just like yesterday's, it's going to be a two-game slate as we're pretty far along in the tournament. Um, it starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time, um, but unlike yesterday's, we have much closer games. So I think it's a very good uh, slate for GPP, but also to gain edge um, in cash games. Um, I have some strong takes um, today, so I, I think I'm very excited to uh, share you with, with my core plays and then I guess, you know, with some predictions for the matchups. So yeah, let's not waste any more time and dive in. So the first matchup um, is between Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Um, Chelsea is a slight favorite at home at plus 105 and Real Madrid is an underdog at plus 280 on the road. And then the second game involves Villarreal um, as a big underdog at plus 425. And then Bayern Munich on the road, despite um, they're the favorite in that matchup at minus 175. So yeah, let's dive into the Chelsea-Real Madrid matchup. Um, I think that's a closer matchup as the odds indicate. Um, because Real Madrid actually had a really good game last time out against PSG in the Champions League. Um, I know uh, Kareem Benzema was <laughs> on fire um, that matchup, but PSG this just did not look very good with Messi and Mbappe. So I, I, I don't I don't think um, to me at least watching that game, Real Madrid was not that impressive to me. But then on the other side of this matchup, Chelsea is not. You know, I haven't been impressed with Chelsea at all this whole season in the EPL, but also in the Champions League. So I do think that's more of a toss up. But, you know, since Chelsea's at home, I'm still going to have to favor Chelsea. But I do think in terms of uh, DFS and then dom uh, possession domination, I think it's going to be more of a 50 50 kind of a game. So I think you want to have a share of some pieces from each game, depending on your um, game narrative. So that's usually how soccer DFS goes. You kind of come up with the game narrative, and then based on that narrative, you um, kind of, you know, build a roster. Obviously, if you think Real Madrid is going to win and dominate the possession, um, then you want to have as many Real Madrid pieces from this matchup, right? Um, on the other side, if you think, you know, vice versa, Chelsea is going to dominate at home, um, which I think Chelsea should be able to do, Um not dominate, but should be able to control the game. I think Chelsea, I, I, I like I like the Chelsea side much better here today. So my game prediction is Chelsea to win um, one to zero. I don't think it's going to be a, a, a as of a high scoring game as Real Madrid was involved in. I much prefer Chelsea's defense over PSG's defense. Um, as you can see, Chelsea has not been giving up that many goals, um, except for the last match against Brentford. But I think I think that was more of a trap match, in my opinion. So here you see, and even though it's an FA Cup and Champions League Cup matches, two to zero they won, two to one, one zero, three to one. So really, like except for the last match, they've been they have not been giving up a lot of goals. So I do think it's gonna be a much lower lower scoring game than we're used to um, involving Real Madrid. Um, but yeah, so let's dive into the core players for Chelsea. Um, it all starts with Mason Mount and then their fullbacks. Um, Mason Mount takes a lot of set pieces, but also with uh, Marcos Alonso and Reese James, if they do start. Um, I fully expect them to start, so we'll see what happens. But those fullbacks like to go up and down and cross the ball. But Real Madrid, is, since they're a good opponent, I don't think they're going to be as willing to go up as much. Maybe Reese James. I think Reese James will be more willing to go up than Alonso is, uh, just based on the uh, formation. Um, so I think that's where I'm at right now. Um, but Mason Mount is the core player that you're going to want to target in an optimal setting. Um, but obviously, for GPP purposes, you can fade them and then play um, Christian Pulis Pulisic. Um, obviously, you know, um, he has the upside to be able to score goals and he has the upside to create scoring chances um, for the American. So there is a good chance that he can break the slate, Pulisic. Um, but, you know, if I had to choose between Mount and Pulisic, I'm going to have to go with Mount. And then for deep GPP, I mean, Havertz doesn't really do much um, other than just, you know, playing the striker position and scoring goals. So if he can score one, you know, obviously if he scores two goals, I think that's going to break the slate. Um, but, you know, if you think they'll score, 
Havertz could be on the on the end of um one of them. So, and then in terms of the central midfielders, I very much prefer. Actually, I think I actually think it's going to be a toss up. I was going to think I was going to say if Jorginho is and he will take penalty kicks, um, but um, between Kovacic and then Conte, um, I think they're more both more uh, defensive minded central uh, midfielder, which I think is going to be very crucial against Real Madrid because Real Madrid has one of the best um, central midfielders, in my opinion, in terms of uh, controlling the game and the pace of the game with Modric and Cruz and then Casemiro maybe um, in the middle. So um, I do like that lineup for Real Madrid, but I think, like I said, Chelsea on the out, out in the flanks and then Mount, Mount's uh, creativity will uh, be the difference, in my opinion, uh, for Chelsea. But yeah, but if you do think Real Madrid is going to win or have a good game against Chelsea or be a high scoring game, it all starts with um, Tony Cruz as the main guy who takes a lot of set pieces for them, but also Modric. Um, so I'd say go between those two um, as like the first guy, in my opinion. And then Benzema. Um, if you think Real Madrid is going to score, Benzema, you have to have Benzema, in my opinion. He takes penalty kicks. He um, also creates chances for the team, even though he plays the striker position. He's more of a you know, a uh, false nine where he holds the ball very well up there. And then he can also create plays um, coming down, uh, down on the field. So I like Benzema a lot as a, you know, creator for Real Madrid, but also a school scorer potentially um, in terms of uh, Vinicius Jr. And Marco Asensio, I think those guys are good picks for GPP purposes, but other than, you know, shots and potential scoring they don't really do as much as let's say Modric or Cruz they're more like I said Real Madrid is more of a central midfield dominated team in my opinion who uh does not like to cross the ball that much as much as Chelsea at least so I think you know for what it's worth the crossing uh, upside is low for Real Madrid guys but I think chances created upside is pretty high for their central midfielders so I think that's the edge that you're kind of looking to looking at. Um, if you are looking to play some of these guys, um, just knowing that knowing how the team plays and knowing the trends and the likely formation for each team, I think helps us to understand where the production and DFS points will come out uh, come from. So I, like I said, Chelsea likes to fl- attack on the side um, flanks, but Real Madrid likes to you know possess the ball and go with down the middle in the central midfield position where their strength is. The second matchup of the day uh, for the Champions League slate is Villarreal versus Bayern Munich. Like I said, Bayern Munich obviously is a favorite. Um, I think Villarreal has a very good tournament, but Bayern Munich is a very um, good team, (laughs) so to speak. Um, That's an understatement. Bayern Munich has been, you know, blowing people out. Um, as you see in the last Champions League match, they won seven to one, seven goals. So that tells you how uh, potent their offense can be, um, which is led by, you know, the one and only Robert Lewandowski up top. So uh, I think that's going to be the biggest question, whether you play him or not play him, whether you want to play somebody else like Benzema or Mount over Lewandowski, given the pricing. Um, Since they're on the road, Bayern Munich, I mean, I can see a path where they don't score enough goals for his price tag to be worthwhile. Um, But you saw earlier yesterday's um, slate to Liverpool on the road. Um, Despite the fact that they were on the road, Liverpool scored a lot more goals than Manchester City, who was at home uh, on yesterday's slate. So it can happen. Um, I trust Bayern Munich's offense more than Chelsea's or Real Madrid's, so I can definitely see that happening. But at the same time, Villarreal actually is a pretty decent squad in terms of um, team defense. I mean, Villarreal will, will most likely sit back and kind of defend for the most for most of the game, and then maybe counterattack um, and try to score. Um, and Villarreal has not been in the best form l- lately in the in La Liga. As you see here, they lost to Levante and they lost to Cadiz, um, uh, 2-0, 1-0. So it looks like they're having some issues scoring goals, but also defending. 
Um, so, so I do think it kind of favors Bayern Munich. Um, it supports that, you know, our, our kind of our lean on Bayern Munich players. So, like I said, it starts with Lewandowski. I think that's the biggest question. I mean, if you think you can justify the price by um, predicting that he's going to score two goals at least or one goal or one assist and one assist, I think that um, could justify his price, in my opinion. Um, but then, you know, more importantly, I think aside from him, there are plenty of offensive weapons on Bayern Munich, like Sané, like Mueller, like Coman. And then I think my favorite player today for my Munich is uh, actually Josh Kimmich. Um, he takes, you know, most of their set pieces. He has been in great form lately, as you see here, 7.5. I mean, you see all these ratings. He's got an assist in the last three games. I mean, he's been on fire. So I actually like him. I know most people will try to jam in these three guys between Sané, Mueller, Coman, um, along with Lewandowski. Um, but I actually prefer Kimmich over any of these three guys other than Lewandowski. And then their fullbacks, I mean, I think they're okay picks if you have the money to play them, um, Pavard and Hernandez. I very much prefer Pavard because he likes to go up and down more often. And then given the formation, I think Parejo is not the best defender on this flank. So if they're all matched, lined up on the same side, I prefer Pavar to go up and down and create more uh, space for himself and then cross the ball and create scoring chances um, subsequently. So I, I do like Pavar um, over Hernandez, but um, Bayern Munich's fullbacks are not as aggressive and marching up, the, up and down the field like Chelsea fullbacks. So I, I prefer Chelsea fullbacks for defensive players in your lineup. But if you um, need to go down the price on the pricing side, I can definitely see playing one of these two guys for Bayern Munich, especially if you don't, if you think that you don't have enough Bayern Munich pieces um, for your lineup, um, which I think most people will think like Bayern Munich is going to dominate the possession and win three, nothing or something like that. Most likely um, it can happen. The odds are good that it could happen, but I can definitely see another path where Bayern Munich um, maybe win, wins one to zero or it gets a tie um, since they're on the road and kind of, you know, bank on the fact that the next match between these two teams will be at home for Bayern Munich and then they can win it then in the second leg. And lastly, if you think you, uh, if you think Villarreal will match up well, if you think, I think, I think you're going to be chasing goals in that regard, because I don't think Villarreal is going to out dominate, um, out possess Bayern Munich in my opinion. Um, so I do think Bayern Munich, regardless of the outcome of the game, is going to dominate possession. So for DFS purposes, you want to have Bayern Munich pieces over Villarreal in an optimal setting. But for GPP purposes, you would be chasing goals. And for Villarreal, it all starts with this guy right here. One of my favorite soccer players um, in the modern era, um, Dan Juma. I do think he's going to, after this season, he's going to go somewhere else up you know, uh, for more of a, you know, for a better or, you know, more popular club, in my opinion, he is that good. In my opinion, he is that talented. Um, I do think he can definitely penetrate um, against a uh, weak Bayern Munich defense here in the mid, in the middle. Um, I'd like Danjuma uh, to be on the end of a scoring if they do score. And then all of the set pieces really for VRL are taken by Danny Parejo. Um, so I think matching, you know, pairing them up is not a bad idea, but pricing on them is actually pretty um, prohibiting, actually. Um, so if you think, um, if you're going to play both of these guys, I'd rather play maybe like both of the Real Madrid center central midfielders or Chelsea fullbacks or something like that. I just think there are better places to justify that kind of uh pricing combined between these two but if you think they're gonna score i mean either one of them or, or at least one of them will probably be on the end of a goal for Villarreal. and then if you think like you know gerard moreno um if you think he's gonna take a lot of shots um for some reason i mean he's a good bet to um you know if there are penalty kicks he could take it um, I've seen it. I see. It's, I've seen it. I've seen where he takes penalty kicks. I've seen where he can pop off um, against inferior opponents. But against Bayern Munich, I think it's going to be a tough, 
uh, choice to uh, select him given his pricing. I just think his pricing should be much lower um, in this kind of a game narrative against Bayern Munich, against the juggernaut like in Bayern Munich. So, um, and then I think for another GPP, um, I think Los Elso um, is another decent pick. Um, uh, I'm not 100% sure, I'll be honest with you, whether he um, has been taking set piece, set, a share of set pieces from Donnie Parejo because he used to for Tottenham when he used to play for Tottenham. Um, but Lo Celso can def- that does definitely have an upside um, to cross the ball, create chances, and he, he doesn't really like to shoot the ball. But he's definitely a playmaker that can, you know, pay dividends if you uh, play him, if he starts today. So there is a big if, if he starts today, um, there's a lot of uh, ifs, in my opinion, for Bayern Munich. Um, I know last time out against PSG, they just fielded the most offensive and aggressive um, lineup that I've seen out of Bayern Munich's roster. But today on the road, I don't know if that's going to be the case. So we'll see. You just have to monitor who here starts up top three behind Lewandowski. And I think that's going to um, make a lot of, uh, put, you know, have a lot of impact on your, on your roster building, in my opinion. But like I said, it doesn't really matter because I <laughs> prefer Josh Kimmich. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, oh, okay. Well, last thing is the prediction is, like I said, I think Bayern Munich is going to win one to zero or two to one. So I think it's going to be a lower scoring match. I think Bayern Munich is going to try to limit um, and damage control against Villarreal on the road. So I do think it's going to be much of a slower pace game um, than we're used to for Bayern Munich. I think, Bayern, like I said, I'm predicting that Bayern Munich is going to try to be more offensive minded at home in the second leg. So that's that's where I'm standing in terms of game prediction for this matchup. But like I said, it's another two game matchup. So, you know, feel free to go pretty crazy. Um, I, like I said, compared to yesterday's slate, today's are uh, today's games are much, much closer. Um, so feel free to uh, play any Villarreal or Real Madrid guys. Um, but I think both games are going to be much low scoring game, uh, lower scoring game compared to yesterday's uh, games. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions on Soccer DFS or on the slate, please let me know. I'll be available on Twitter, on YouTube, and on Discord. If you like the video, like this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button for more videos. Yeah, if you guys want to chat about soccer, feel free to as well. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.